Welcome back to Cigar Time. You almost caught me there. <laughs> the world's most viewed show all about cigars. Yeah. And, and stuff. The and stuff. wonderful the world of smoking cigars. You know, I got recognized in a golf course. By the caddy? No, not by the caddy, by, uh, <laughs> by the starter. I was, on the, I was on the putting green, and the guy comes walking over to me and says, oh, I, like, I want to introduce myself because I'm a big fan of Cigar Time. Really? Yeah, so we started talking for a few Say, minutes. Hey, South Billy Rob. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so it was pretty funny. It was so pretty that's funny. the guy. He yeah, said, that's, that's the, guy the chow for now that's guy. The, yeah, so I talked to him for like <laughs> 10 minutes and I gave him a cigar. <laughs> so if you ever see me on a golf course, come over to me and I promise you I will give you a free cigar. He never does that. Where you got, where are you going to be Sunday? And if you, see uh, me, <laughs> if you see me on a golf course, come on over and I'll buy you breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. Well, you'll never <laughs> see that. You'll never see that. Because that's how much golf you play. That's the odds. You know, I do actually have a golf story. I haven't played golf since I'm 17, which is a long time ago. They had golf back then? They had golf back there. St. Andrews. <laughs> These little ha they were like hacky sacks. I was, playing on a, <laughs> I was playing on a city golf course called Cobbs Creek in West Philadelphia, not far from where I live. Good salad. And my buddy and I would go out every Saturday morning, dewy, cool, play golf. And I finally did it. I broke 100. And I felt so good. Anybody steps on this, I'll kill him. I felt so good. I didn't play the second nine. That's my golf. Story. That is your only golf joke. That's my. Look, you got you got Bruce laughing. No, it's the truth. To them. That was the truth. You shot a hundred. No, you didn't. I shot a hundred on the first no. nine. No. Well, it wasn't miniature golf. It was like seventy-two hundred yards. Oh I had a twenty-five dollar set of Sears Robux clubs, including the bag. Oh my God! I know, and I actually carried my own bag and walked oh around. God. That I can't believe. I know it's yeah. hard to believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Now I know you're lying. Yeah, yeah, nice. I know. <laughs> if I'm lying, I'm dying. Yeah. So that's that's my uh, one and only golf story. But I will admit, I am getting nauseated by the conversation that goes ad infinitum on and on. And every one of these stores I visit, they're always sitting there talking about. Getting their balls around with the clubs and everything and whatever, whatever. And What's wrong with Doesn't that? Doesn't it hurt? I don't That's know. That's the whole reason we have lounges. Some people tennis, can come to it. I play tennis. I, oh, play my, I can't you stand You can't smoke cigar while you're playing tennis. You've never seen me play tennis. I play in a wheelchair and I'm smoking and hitting <laughs> balls at the same time. <laughs> I want is it last, motorized at least? I want of course it's motorized. Of my life, <laughs> Can you see him chilling around on a motorized <laughs> wheelchair playing tennis? Wait, wait. 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 You want to see, I, you wanna see <laughs> when I play doubles? <laughs> doubles. It's like bumper cars. Yeah, no, I, make, I make myself laugh. I think we got a show to do. Oh, I'm oh sorry. yeah, yeah. Welcome to the did show. Did we start? Yeah, we did. Well, yeah, I, I think we oh, should, yeah, I think I we should defer lights. to the lovely Miss Tia, red light. who will describe our cigar <laughs> today. I think the red light is on. Audience, are you with us oh, out I there? I completely blanked out. Thanks for all that. Oh, before I get into the first cigar, I just want to say this is the last week before Father's Day. Father's Day is June 15th, so if you haven't come on out, come on out and grab a cigar. Um, we're starting with the only cigar, the La Perla del Mar, which means the Pearl of the Sea. The wrapper is in Ecuadorian Connecticut, mm -hmm. and the filler and binder are both Nicaraguan. I'm going to cheat here on the sizes because it was just too hard to remember. So they come in a six, six and a quarter by 54, a four and three fourths by 52, a three and three fourths by 56, and my favorite, six by 60. I, I memorized that. What do they call that six by 60 again? It's Gordo. Oh. Or tamale. <laughs> <laughs> That's... A flower or one or a that's that's a, a different six, cigar. A soft tamale or it's still six by sixty, right? Tamacle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't but know. It's only one brand uses uh, that. That's one brand uses that. Yeah, but isn't that we still... talked about them a few weeks ago? Yeah. Okay. Taste profile: caramel and wood spice, which that seems to really go good together. So I can't wait to smoke this. Yes. It um, does. This is a, actually a traditionally blended Cuban brand that was resuscitated by J.C. Lewin. <laughs> Did you see how hard I, she focused on that word? She's like, that wow. resuscitated. I think it's resuscitated. Right. I thought you guys would appreciate that. Can we all get um, resuscitated by As an exquisite soft box press blend. Okay, after the review of the Diamond Crown, I doubt it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the filler is actually from four different regions of Nicaragua. We have um, the Pueblo Nuevo, um, the La Riena, Condega, and Jalapa. 
So. Wow. <laughs> ah, very yeah, good. I've got that little accent going. That's that really is. impressive. Thank I you. I am really impressed. Thank you. The combination offers of, of all those offers complexity and depth that we've come to enjoy out of a Nicaraguan cigar, yeah. and it's a great, affordable price cigar, too. So. Wow. Give me props. Give me props. Hey, all right. you got props. Hey. <laughs> I'm listening. I'm getting respect. <laughs> I'd rather give you props than a raise. <laughs> oh, I'll take the raise. Oh, yeah. I yeah. <laughs> There's a shot. Yeah. Well, today, <laughs> uh, props. today, is, uh, t today Paul Secret is between death. two countries. He's between Cuba and the rest of the <laughs> and, yeah, and everywhere else. <laughs> See, Caribbean, not Caribbean. I know. Central America. <laughs> Caribbean. So you might remember last week as we were talking about some of the different brands that different companies make. Make? Oh, no. I didn't just do that, did you? I didn't. Oh. You, you imagine. I heard. Uh, <laughs> I heard. Baked. Baked. <laughs> Shall I go on? Yeah. God. I'm going to keep laughing. I think I'm rubbing off some claws. Try talking so I don't fall asleep. <laughs> if I talk, you will fall asleep. Anyway, what we were talking about was the fact that there are a variety of brands that are Cuban brands that come from Cuba, that are still made in Cuba today, but are also available as non-Cuban brands. So to quote a good friend, what's up with that? <laughs> um, <laughs> I love it's, when Paul tries to be him. I know. <laughs> it, it just doesn't work, does it? It's, it's, it's like Mike doing stand-up. Yes. <laughs> Man. Very I'm, surprised, I'm surprised you didn't say, what very is painful that? Watch. Very yeah. painful to watch. Very painful to watch. Yes. I'm sorry for At least I didn't say, yo, what's up with that? Yo, okay, yo. What's up with that, yo? yo. What's up, yo? <laughs> when the revolution took place in Cuba, and the, uh, some of the best people in the cigar making industry pulled up stakes and got the heck out of the country, some of them took their brands with them, or at least they took their skills with them and began making cigars elsewhere that they called by the same name. And there were, at that time, all kinds of international legal battles about whether Cuba or those people or the nation where they happen to wind up and start making the cigars were going to own the brand or not. Uh, and this went on for a long time. In fact, some of these cases were still being decided during the cigar boom in the 1990s uh, and into the early 2000s. But the bottom line was many of the most famous brands made in Cuba throughout history wound up also being made by other companies elsewhere. I'm just going to give you a quick visual rundown. Partagas, Puerto de Monterrey, Bolivar, El Rey del Mundo. Every one of these are spectacular Cuban cigars, by the way, and fairly spectacular non-Cuban cigars, too. Punch. La Gloria Cubana, Trinidad. We only have a half hour. <laughs> Actually, it's only 28 and a half minutes. San Luis Rey, Juan Lopez, Monte Cristo, Romeo and Juliet, and from a little bit out in left field, San Cristobal, which a lot of people don't even realize is a Cuban brand. They've been making it for a while now. The cigar we're smoking right now, La yeah. Perla Del Mar, was a Cuban brand. And one that's a little bit different in how it came to be a non-Cuban brand, and that's Davidoff. And it used to be that Davidoff had all of their cigars manufactured in Cuba. And somewhere around, I want to say... 1980. 1980, yeah. 1980, they decided that the quality control in Cuba was not up to their standards. So There's actually two sides to that story. The Cubans have a slightly different version of that, but we'll save that for a later date. Well, I'd love to hear that. Yeah, it gets, Take some of the pressure it off gets, of me. It gets long-winded. I mean, you know. Oh, that's right. Welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but we only have about 18 and a half minutes left. Now, the Cuban, you know, Zeno Davidoff, who, who is, was world-renowned as, as being a person of, of good taste and, you know, the company of high luxury and items. 
uh, he got into a snit with the Cuban government over various uh, things, mostly the cost of the cigars. There was a lot of monetary issues involved, not just the quality. So, but again, it, it gets rather long-winded, so I'll defer back to you. Okay. What I wanted to talk about was, in addition, was now what happens. Now you have these 20-some brands that are available to, in Cuba to anybody except Americans. And you have equivalent brands from Nicaragua and the Dominican Republic and Honduras that are available pretty much everywhere except Cuba, although really this business of these brands here. is here in the United States. The question is, what is the relationship between those brands in Cuba and those brands here, and I don't mean the business relationship, I mean the cigar relationship. Because I suspect you would be in for a pretty big surprise if you picked up, for example, a La Gloria Cubana, expecting it to be the Cuban La Gloria Cubana, and smoked it and it was the Dominican one. Totally different cigar. Completely. And that is the case for every one of these. Other than the name, they bear no relationship to their Cuban counterparts at all. The result of all of this uh, lawsuit back and forth and who was going to control and own what led to some very interesting goings on at the end of the boom and in the early 2000s. In 1999, there had been some talk by uh, 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 Clinton, Bill Clinton, about ending the embargo. And there was a bit of a panic then about who was going to control each of those Cuban cigar trademarks. Uh, of course, Altatus that we talked about last week, uh, because they were a conglomerate that included the Spanish government's tobacco monopoly, that meant or means that Altatus also owns a 50% interest in Cuba tobacco, in the company in Cuba that controls the entire cigar industry. Many of the brands that I just showed you uh, are made outside of Cuba by Altatus, and I guess you would say made inside of Cuba by Altatus and their partner, the, the government of Cuba. Um, so those brands are in an interesting position as far as what would happen if the embargo ended tomorrow and they wanted to start selling uh, a, a Cuban Romeo and Juliet in the United States at, in the same places that are currently selling Dominican Rome, Romeo and Juliet? I think, that would be, I think that would be much easier for them than it would be for some of the other companies. Well, you're exactly right. And, and for example, many of the uh, general cigar brands and right. general cigar although they also have some of the most famous Cuban brands in the industry, uh, don't have that link to Cuba at all. Right. So it would be a flat-out legal battle over who owned the trademarks. Ain't gonna happen. The, uh, the interesting thing to me is that there were some independent business people in the early 2000s who ran around buying up whatever obscure Cuban cigar brand trademarks they could put their hands on in hopes that when the embargo ended, they would have one of the big companies over a barrel and be able to charge them a fortune to be able to use the name. Uh, the, the, the guy who did the most of that is an icon in our industry. He's a fellow by the name of Lou Rothman who bought up more obscure Cuban brands than anybody. But Altatus figured out how to overcome that problem before it became a problem. They just bought Lou Rothman. <laughs> that made pretty it pretty smart. easy. Yeah. A sharp cookie. Anyway, that, that's actually most of what I wanted to say about this, except every one of these Cuban branded cigars are actually excellent cigars in their own right, mm -hmm. despite the fact that they're not from Cuba. If you get a chance, these are all available in Cigar Cigars. And if by some miracle you have the opportunity to smoke the Cuban versions of these cigars, it might be very interesting to make a comparison. 
Let me, let me, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, that's let it. me just chime in with the following. Everybody thinks when the Cuban embargo ends, which it will end because the Castro brothers are not getting any younger, and when Fidel, or as he's affectionately referred to on the island, El Comandante, passes on, his younger brother Raul is, is more pragmatic than Fidel and, and, and is more welcoming an open economic society as opposed to his brother. So I think once El Comandante is no longer with us, I think things will move rapidly. Maybe not quite Berlin Wall falling, but it'll move rapidly because American business wants the embargo over. Here's the problem, and it's a rather unique problem. The Cuban government can only make about 150 million decent premium cigars. They have a lot of internal issues that even money can't necessarily cure. American knowledge and infrastructure can certainly help, but there's going to be no panacea. The, the distributors, especially the Spanish government and, and the French uh, monopoly in several European countries and Middle Eastern countries, uh, South American countries, have supported the Cuban tobacco business for the past 50-odd years, and they're not going to all roll over and say, ship all the good quality Cuban cigars to the United States. It's just right. not going to happen overnight. What I think you will see initially is some blended cigars. Some of the companies in this country that have their roots in Cuba may be able to secure uh, bundles of tobacco and blend, especially with Nicaragua, blend uh, hybrid cigars of Cuban and Nicaraguan and perhaps Dominican and Honduras as well uh, cigars. But I don't think you're going to see a flood of Cuban cigar boxes uh, come into this country anytime soon after the embargo ends. It's going to be a long period because there's so much that goes into growing tobacco, as Paul can certainly you know, enumerate on, that it takes years to cultivate fields, expand fields, because the Cubans have been using a lot of fields that could go for tobacco growing to grow food stocks, which they urgently need as well. Tobacco is a luxury item. It's an export item, yes, but it's not anywhere near their largest export item or money-raising item. Food stocks, minerals, and tourism are the big items in Cuba. So as much as we all love cigars, and, and we all wish that the embargo would be over, and yes, there is a quality factor of Cuban cigars sometimes, but the last 15 or 20 years or so, it's hit and miss with the quality. As most of you know, I spent a lot of time in Cuba. I've been there many times, all legally, with license from the State Department. <laughs> And I've made many friends in the Cuban tobacco business, which I still talk to today. There are problems down there. And, and like I say, they're not going to just drop everything and export everything to the United States to the detriment of all the countries and monopolies that have supported them. So this is an obstacle that has to be overcome. The trademark issues, I think, will resolve themselves by some uh, pairing up of companies and, and you know sharing distribution rights. I think the internal struggles, which I also was privy to in the late 90s, will resolve themselves. But the supply issue has a ways to go before that resolves itself. That's we all. can, once the embargo is over, we can call another country. Theoretically, and, you'll be able to do that. Order online right? yeah. and have them deliver yeah. here because, because of the, you know, the, yeah. the, the embargo. I, I would estimate that, that probably in the high 70s to 80% of the so-called Cuban cigars in this country at any given time are counterfeit or phonies. Mm -hmm. it, is, it, is a, it is 80 percent and that includes yeah. Yeah. the ones that people, many of the ones that people order online from overseas. Yeah. There are a very few Unscrupulous. completely yeah. legitimate. What about when people go on okay. vacation and they say, oh I bought back. If you buy a cigar in certain countries, any of the islands, mm -hmm. you know, Mexico, you're getting what the Cubans refer to as tourista grade which is not rolled in the eight city factories. It's suburban. It's not necessarily the choice tobacco from, from Western Cuba, the uh, Yota Abajo or the Pinar del Rio, as it's commonly known. You know, there's a lot of little tricks to Cuban tobacco. And, and, and most people have never, unless, unless you've gone up and down Fleet Street in London or shopped in the fancy Gerard in, 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 in Zurich, Unless you've shopped in some of the finer European shops or Middle Eastern shops, which are really genuine Cuban cigars, you've never really tasted a good Cuban cigar. And, and, and the joke is, back in the heyday of the boom, 
people would walk into the store carrying cardboard boxes loaded with, you know, boxes of Cubans, and, and of course everyone, everybody had the Cohiba Esplendido. In a glass top box. Glass well, no, not even, no, a glass, not, not, not even a glass top box, that's a joke. They would come in, <laughs> and, 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 and the first question, I would, they would want me to authenticate them, knowing that I had extensive travels to Cuba. And the first thing I would ask them, you, okay, let's take the Cuba Espl the uh, Cohiba Esplendido. How much did you pay for it? And a, and the stock was two hundred and fifty dollars. Everybody paid two hundred and fifty dollars. Well, in Cuba, which is the cheapest place in the world you can buy Cuban cigars, that box officially at that time was three hundred and eighty-three dollars. And I would go and show them an export stamp and an export paper to show it because you have to show that to leave the country with cigars from Cuba. And I'd show them three eighty-three, and I'd say, how could somebody buy the box of cigars in Cuba? You know, take the speedboat across the Straits of Florida, <laughs> sell it to Jose, who sells it to Max, who sells it to Sam, and then runs it up to you and loses $133 on a box. Then I would say to him, give me one. I'll split it open, I guarantee there's at least two twigs in this cigar. And usually there were three. Wow. So, so many people got, you want to say <clears throat> screwed on TV? Sure, not. Okay. Just did. So many people got screwed on <laughs> out of their money, but that has calmed down. Most of, most of the phonies that I see flying around are made in either Miami or in the Dominican Republic. But, you know, be on, be on guard. You know, before you shell out your hard-earned money for Cuban cigars, I mean, just caveat emptor. Just be careful. Mm. That's all I got to say. Oh, come on, come it's, come on. it's time for a commercial. Ooh. Commercial? What's that? A commercial. A commercial. Wow. We have a goodie pack. We have probably the finest item for cigars made for golfers you'll ever want to see, that's, that's or for anybody true. really. This is the Perdomo 4-pack, and in this 4-pack, Rob's going to tell you is... Uh, the Estate Selection, the Habano, the 10-year Champagne Anniversary, and the Exhibition. It comes in Natural and Maduro, so two different packs. We're showing you the Natural right now. Right. Now... Understand that these are the higher end Perdomos. These are not. Yes, they're not the lower end. These are not the low end. They're not the. Yeah. Yeah, we we we've, right. we've, right. we've been Perdomo we've been with Nick and his family. We've been with Nick and his family since he started. He started around the same time we started, mm. and and you know a finer guy and a nicer company you don't want to meet. I mean they're just great people. I mean yeah. they're just wonderful people, and we're very proud of our association with them. And this four pack. Uh, comes in a humidified pouch, which will keep these cigars fresh for a, a very long time, and you can reseal it. Uh, is about a $30 value, and we sell them every day. There's nothing extraordinary because we sell it every day for $19.95. And believe me, in the year or so that we've been selling them, we've sold thousands and thousands, thousands of these packs. So wow, it's incredible. So it's a good value. It's a good company to buy from. It's a good company to deal with, and they make a quality product, as I'm sure a lot of you know. So come on in and grab yourself some Perdomo four packs. Thank you. Take it on your next round. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. Very nice. I think oh. we need to review this quickly. Oh yeah. Oh. Um, to the I'll start. Um, <laughs> huh? We got to get to this day in history. That's right. Oh yeah. Oh, we got to hurry up. Okay. Um, I really taste the caramel and the woody spice. Um, I'm definitely getting spice. I think probably because it's an Ecuadorian wrapper. I'm getting a little bit of that peppery in there. Um, I like the construction. I have to be honest. I've seen this in the humidor since I started working for Cigar Cigars in 2007, I believe. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was that far back. December. Yeah. And um, I always walk by them. I never, like, wanted to smoke one. I don't know why. And I'm, it's a shame that this is the first time I'm smoking one. It's amazing. I love the cigar. Rob? Um, I, I don't get the, the caramel, no. or, and I don't get the spice, but I definitely get the wood taste. Um, it's a very mild cigar. Yeah. I like the box press uh, of it. Mm -hmm. uh, Tia, I'm sure you like the band. I do like the band. Nice. It says Tobacco Superiores. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. From the mouths of babes, off time come gems. And you're the one with the Spanish accent. I yeah. know. That one just, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, surprisingly, I like this cigar mm -hmm. a great deal. It oh, is, I wouldn't have guessed that. <laughs> it is very mild. It is smooth. But it has none of the grassiness that some Connecticut wrap yeah. cigars mm. have, I guess because it's in Ecuadorian Connecticut. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure a partial to Ecuadorian? Yeah. Only slightly. Uh -huh. um, but I think that underlying that 
there is just just enough of the distinctive rich Nicaraguan flavors that people who like Nicaraguans like. And I, 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 this is a great morning cigar. It comes through nicely. It's in no way heavy, but it's got enough flavor and enough interesting flavor to really be good. Scott? Good cigar. Uh, I'm not getting the <laughs> caramel or the, the spice, but I am getting uh, kind of earthy and, and woody. Um, it is very smooth. Yeah, it's yeah. mild. I, uh, I very, very flavorful. Um, and the wrapper, it's got a really beautiful wrapper on it. It is gorgeous, yeah. It's really nice. Rob, what do these sell for? I think they're like $6. <laughs> I think it's $6. Yeah, it's right around it's $6. It's affordable it's, price. It's, it's, very, it's very inexpensive. It's very popular yeah. price. Very, it's inexpensive. Well, I, I echo everything the panel said so far. I mean, I can't disagree with anything. I'm not getting the caramel either. But it's well constructed for the price. Good cigar. So let's rate it. We're four gonna point, have, a 4.25. Rob? Uh, 4.5. 4.25. 4.5. <laughs> You're the deciding vote. I'll give it a 4.375. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's where it comes in Which the is exactly You know, you know I think exactly. I passed this cigar because I, like I don't like the box. Out. The box is not very inviting. I think that's why no, I passed the No, but the cigar, cigar is very inviting. Yeah, but I think that's why when we talk about marketing. I think that's why I kind of yeah. stayed away from it because I didn't like the box. That's why I stayed away from Padron for so long and then suddenly tried them. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. No, <laughs> seriously. Yeah, right. No, I did for a long time. Yeah, he said that I finally had one. I'm like, holy cow, did. what am I been missing? Yeah. Wow. And don't forget, it's Newman month. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. And this is a Newman cigar. Yeah. That's right. If you buy any uh, four Newman cigars, the Pearl Del Mar, uh, Brick House, uh, the J.C. Newman, Diamond Crown, the Julius Caesar, and the Maximus. Maximus. I, think, I think there's one more I'm missing. Do, 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 Brick do. House? I got Brick House. Oh, anyway, okay. buy, uh, if you buy four, the first uh, 25 customers at each store uh, will get a gift certificate to the J.C. Newman Connoisseurs Club. Um, and for that, you get a t-shirt and four more premium cigars. And these are Ooh. like very, one of them is a super premium cigar that yeah. you get. So, uh, yeah. And we're also giving away four or five trips to Tampa. Absolutely. All expenses paid. Yep. Airfare, hotel, tours, meals, whatever. The hotel we stayed in was fabulous. Yeah, it was great. awesome. Well, great. Has, the to rooms were huge. He just huge. likes to rub it in. Yeah. Two. The, factory <laughs> tour, <laughs> rooms. the factory tour is unbelievable. Did you get your yeah. own room? You yeah. Be, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, There's three you, rooms. You'll you'll a impressed. kitchen, a living room, and a bedroom. Hot tub? Wow. Hot tub, yeah. All right. All right. Wow. Hot tub. Did you go? Did you smoke in your hot tub? No, I didn't go. Did you smoke in your Somebody house? Somebody had the bed. No. no. Somebody had was it, behind the Were they work. non-smoking yeah. rooms? You know, I don't know. <laughs> you never Because <laughs> I won't. St- yeah, I know. You oh, won't. you don't stay anywhere you but can't you know smoke? There's a, a patio oh, out yeah, back. Oh, my patio. God. We stopped there at like 2 o'clock uh, in the morning. Cool. Smoking cigars. It was awesome. I can't well, tell you uh, how many times. Our last segment is going to be in on this day in history, we get to say goodbye. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, you know what? Uh, in 1948, Chuck Yeager broke the uh, speed of sound. On the Bonneville Salt Flakes. Flats. Yeah. All right, cool. say goodbye. Smoke often and smoke happy. Quickly. Uh, smoke <laughs> <laughs> Quickly. Oh, smoke sweet. Bye. Ciao for now, everybody. I like Still my smoke sweet. Again, on behalf of all the family at Cigar Cigars, we thank you very much for your loyalty, your comments, your patronage, and above all, be safe out there. Go. Phillies. Yeah, go Phillies. Go Phillies. Thank you for viewing, and we'll see you next week.